The future will be an exciting, fascinating new world, completely different from what it is now. Computer power doubles every 18 months. This tremendous rise in computer power means that eventually we will reach something called the singularity. The foundation of the singularity is AI, artificial intelligence. In 30 years, the ability of computers might possibly match that of the human brain. This revolution might be comparable to the invention of the alphabet, agriculture, or machines, which are the great turning points in human history. Now, writing was invented about 50,000 years ago, which led to an explosion in knowledge. Then agriculture was invented probably 10,000 years ago. The machine age began about 300 years ago. Now, a similar revolution of this magnitude is on the horizon. The singularity may happen around 2045. It means that computers may approach our ability to think. This may not be easy to understand or even believe, but such a future might lie ahead of us. Now, the first episode is about future predictions. Thanks to the explosive evolution of computers, it's possible to make reasonably accurate and realistic predictions about the future. This will vastly improve the quality of our life. Tedious drudgery will be eliminated. Sensors will anticipate where problems will arise or when machines break down so that everything runs smoothly and efficiently. These predictions will affect every aspect of our lives. They might predict when you will get sick, where your next vacation will be, what the next hit song might be, and what the crime rates might be in the future. They will predict the best possible career for us, the best path for success and happiness, and even predict our future girlfriend or boyfriend. Yes, the future has already begun. Today, the world is becoming full of predictions about the future. This is possible because computers are rapidly catching up with human intelligence. IBM held an event to showcase the capabilities of Watson, an artificial intelligence system. Hello, Watson here. What are we working on today? The company had already developed programs that can beat people at chess matches and on quiz shows. Now, managers want to put Watson to practical use. They're offering future prediction services to hospitals, financial institutions, and other customers. Various forms of artificial intelligence, or AI, have already become part of our everyday lives. AI takes the shape of robots like these, along with mobile devices such as smartphones. But what we see is not really AI. It actually resides in cyberspace on a digital network. In truth, every form of artificial intelligence is software that runs on a supercomputer connected to a network. AI doesn't simply use equations input by people to perform calculations. Instead, it can sort huge amounts of data on its own. It can also identify relationships between different pieces of data. People work to find the reasons for why things happen, but artificial intelligence systems scan numbers and look for patterns. AI uses information collected in the past and mathematically calculates probabilities about the future. Human beings can't grasp the computations involved, 
All we understand are the answers. We as humans, as smart as we are, we just can't deal with all that information. So new technology like Watson, artificial intelligence, will help us work in those domains. By 2050, I don't think we'll be able to survive without Watson. Artificial intelligence is already predicting what will happen in the future. Santa Cruz in California is home to 60,000 people. In recent years, there have been a number of violent crimes in the city, and the police force is understaffed. In 2011, officers started following predictions generated by an AI system called PredPol. <laughs> they had been relying on instinct and experience. Now, their approach is completely different. I got your Fred pole right here. Fresh hot Fred pole. Before officers head out on patrols, they look at maps showing where Fred pole has predicted there could be crimes that day. Those areas are marked in red. Each side of the squares represents 150 meters. Predictions are displayed by type of crime, such as burglary or theft. The system doesn't show the reasoning behind the predictions, but the officers follow what they say. Since the police began using PredPol, they've made 50% more arrests, and the crime rate has fallen by more than 20%. This is what the city looks like. As you can see, the city actually is a living, breathing, and moving thing. So if I'm busy chasing yesterday's crime here, it might have moved to here for today. And so that's what's unique about the PredPol program, is it predicts where crime is going to happen today based on where it happened yesterday. The system analyzes crime records and reports from citizens, totaling 120,000 pieces of information per year. This mountain of data details when and where crimes occurred and what happened. It also considers other variables, such as which streetlights are broken and when bars close, and it identifies crime patterns for each neighborhood. The system looks for matches between past data and current conditions and determines where crimes are most likely to occur. A police officer drives into a seemingly crime-free residential area. Get some police work done here. Take a vehicle burglaries here. Predpol has predicted a crime will occur in this neighborhood where the road splits. The police usually don't patrol very much around here. Right after entering the area, the officer notices a man acting suspiciously. What's going on, man? How are you? Come here, I want to talk to you. Okay. Right now, right now, your pupils are pinned down, so they're telling it me that there's something. It could be, but I haven't, I haven't gotten high all day today. It turns out he had served time in prison and was on parole. The officers check the man's belongings and find an expensive bracelet. He's also carrying a knife. The officers arrest the man on suspicion of theft. And see this road right here? Right. Splits right there. These two roads right here. Uh, so you see Front Street and Third Street. If it wasn't for Predpol, we probably would not have driven through here. I would have driven you to another location. So here we are, right in the middle of it, and it worked just like we wanted to. So. 
Experts say by 2045, it will be possible to predict who will commit a crime, as well as when and where. Predictions based on artificial intelligence are beginning to have the power to shape people's careers. There's a singer who was little known until artificial intelligence decided she could be a star. Her name is Heidi Merrill. She had been performing mainly at small bars in New York. Then, in mid-2014, she was suddenly thrust into the spotlight. Thank you, I love you. It just gets more and more fun. I couldn't be happier. Everybody was dancing. I got people wearing my t-shirts. <laughs> A website powered by artificial intelligence predicted her songs would be hits. Singers upload their music to the site. Then, AI automatically predicts the probability that a song will become a hit. The website's database has some three million songs. They cover everything from classical to jazz and rock. The songs have been broken down into 70 elements, such as melody, beat, and key. Artificial intelligence analyzed them and found distinct patterns. Songs that went on to become hits tend to share similarities in areas such as melody and rhythm. The system categorized them into 60 different clusters. but it doesn't explain why the songs became popular. What is clear is that it grouped Merrill's songs along with the hits. So these are the new songs. Songs that fall outside in the middle would be considered not to have optimal mathematical patterns. But songs that fall inside these already existing clusters have optimal mathematical patterns. If in addition, these songs sound like hits and feel like hits, and an industry professional believes that this is a song that has high potential in the marketplace. Artificial intelligence ranked the songs according to their probability of success and introduced them to music producers. Because of that, Merrill was able to make her debut on a music show with a global audience. The show has been viewed online more than 25 million times. I was like, oh, this is great. Somebody, you know, finally heard and liked my song. And yeah. <laughs> the system offers a quick way to discover new talent and is becoming popular among music executives. Fans of the website include major producers. Some people say by 2045, artificial intelligence will even write hit songs. We use you to create a needle stack, and then we build search tools to help you uh, identify which needles out of that needle stack are most appropriate for your business. As you know, for uh, industry professionals, Music X-Ray has no cost. It's a, it's a free tool. You really, you get to use it in exchange for the work that you put into it. Uh, yeah, it's about, I would say 85 to 90% of the artists come from there. Yeah. It's changed, it's, it's hard for me to keep up with it. I mean, it's, you, you just, it's, it's astonishing. The race is on to develop more and more advanced AI systems that deliver the best possible accuracy. One of the leaders in this field is Google.
more people use Google's search engine and email service than any others, giving the company access to mountains of data. Now, it's bringing together top-notch engineers to create artificial intelligence for analyzing all that information. Google is particularly interested in this next-generation supercomputer. D-Wave uses quantum physics to perform calculations. It's said to be the world's first quantum computer. Experts believe it will exponentially increase computing power. Most of D-Wave's hardware is a cooling device. The computer's brain is a small chip measuring barely two centimeters per side. Experts say D-Wave needs just a split second to perform calculations that would take conventional supercomputers thousands of years. It was about asking a query and getting an answer. Now we actually will show you an answer before you even ask. So we'll tell you when your next flight is or if your flight's delayed even before you ask about it. And I do believe that we will be using data in all kinds of ways in the future to help us make the world a better place and help us understand what's going on both uh, locally and globally. The explosive evolution of artificial intelligence is on track to completely change the world. One man saw this future before anyone else. Ray Kurzweil is known for inventing the world's first scanner and voice recognition software. This is several billion times more powerful per yen or per dollar than the, uh, per, than the computer I used when I was a student at MIT. And we'll do that again in the next 25 years. This will again be a billion times more powerful for the same cost. This is also 100,000 times smaller than that computer. Uh, 25 years from now, this will be the size of a blood cell. He predicts that by 2045, computers will be more intelligent than humans. He calls this the singularity. We are gathering more and more information about the world, and so we can analyze that information that's called predictive analytics. Predictions will permeate into our society. Now, in the future, these technologies will spread into all areas at all levels. What kind of society will emerge in the next world of 2045? How will humans live then? Making more advanced predictions about the future will require the use of unprecedented amounts of personal information. The Internet of Things is growing at about a 17% compound annual growth rate and is expected to be five to seven trillion dollars by the end of the decade. Intel has developed this minuscule computer. By embedding it along with sensors in everyday objects, it will become possible to easily connect everything to the Internet. That would provide a simple way to collect huge amounts of user data and lead to more precise predictions using artificial intelligence. This toothbrush is equipped with sensors and an internet connection. So we did the upper row and now we have to go down. It can judge whether a person's teeth are properly brushed or not. Someday, it could make forecasts about dental health. This company has developed a sensor that monitors people's movements and conversations. Every employee wears this special electronic badge. It records everything they say at work, as well as personal distance between people, how much they move, and even their gestures. It detects who voices opinions and when, and who takes the lead in conversations. It can analyze the volume and tone of a person's voice down to the hundredth of a second. This information offers insights into employees' personalities and their potential for leadership. 
The data can be used to make meetings more efficient and for organizational development and personnel changes. We fundamentally believe that this kind of technology is going to impact every single industry all over the world. And I think that as the technology gets cheaper, as these devices go into clothes and become um, essentially free, that that's when you're going to see um, an explosion in the number of people who use it. When making predictions about the future, there are also various challenges, such as the collapse of privacy and the rise of intrusive surveillance techniques. Furthermore, if some jobs are eliminated because of technology, it means that unemployment could cause unforeseen social problems. Why well, believe humans have always accepted the advantages and disadvantages of the rise of technology and have always conquered these new challenges? You see, technology is a double-edged sword. We must understand them and accumulate the wisdom necessary to use them. Artificial intelligence has evolved and has started to outperform humans. Some people are already discovering ways to use the technology to improve their lives. We met a man who didn't simply rely on predictions made by artificial intelligence. He also used them to develop his skills and find happiness. His Welcome name is Chris on. McKinley. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Come on in. He went on dates with many women introduced by a prediction system and was finally able to meet his ideal partner. What should we do? Um... McKinley teaches computer programming at a university. He used to find social situations difficult and was unable to build lasting relationships. Finally, he made up his mind to put his computer skills to work for him. He had an AI program collect data on 30,000 women based on their profiles and other information posted online. Then, the program selected women that he might be a match for. McKinley also programmed the system to predict the women's interests. Next, he used the predictions to design a profile of himself to encourage women to contact him. A number of women showed interest, and he went on many dates. Knowing what they were interested in in advance allowed him to go on dates with confidence. Yeah, it worked better than I thought, and that increased my ability to like kind of be socially fluent within these dates. I got very good, you know, at, at kind of like uh, charming people uh, um, because the dates were so similar. By the time he went on his 88th date, McKinley no longer relied on predictions made by artificial intelligence. He had a feeling he'd finally met the right woman. The two have recently gotten engaged. McKinley didn't need artificial intelligence to tell him they were a good fit. But it was thanks to AI that he became confident, completely different from how he once was. I mean, it, it solved um, emphatically, successfully, a big issue in my life, which is meeting someone that I wanted to marry. I thought it was impressive. I was like, oh, this guy's really smart. It worked to meet me, right? But it didn't work to keep me. You had to do the work to keep me. <laughs> Predictions about the future should be a tool for helping people. Beyond artificial intelligence are things that only people can understand and do. As we head into the next world, 
predictions will become more nuanced and will be used in every aspect of our lives. Now, human beings must discover how to use these predictions to achieve greater happiness and prosperity. Are you ready?